It was on the second day of med school that I learned about the genetic testing of embryos, and it simply blew me away. I was amazed and impressed and in awe and almost shocked that there was technology out there that allowed you to understand the future genetics of a pregnancy and fetus from testing one cell, because back then we used to do day three biopsies. It's because of this interest in the genetic testing of embryos that I pursued the field of reproductive medicine. And that's where I also learned that you get to be on the happy side of medicine. You get to help people achieve their goals and dreams. You get to help people achieve something that they thought wasn't possible. And of course, we do break bad news, but the field of reproductive medicine and reproductive health is a positive one. And I feel like the opportunity to help people in a time of need had its calling all over it for me. What I love about being a fertility doctor is helping people achieve something that they thought was impossible. People come into the office expecting to hear the worst. It can't be done, it won't be done, you're gonna waste time and you're gonna waste money. But as a physician that can help people in a time of need, I have to say it's the most rewarding experience to tell someone, congratulations, you're pregnant, when they never thought they would hear those words. One of my rules is you treat every patient the way you'd want your family members to be treated. If you follow that golden rule, I believe you won't get in trouble. And by trouble, I mean you won't damage that relationship that's so vital to bringing someone through their fertility journey. I think it's really important that when you're talking to a patient, you talk to them like a human, not like they're someone who knows medical knowledge and not like someone who has no knowledge whatsoever. If you have a normal conversation with someone and you talk to them the way that you would want your own family member to talk to, you tend to build a very strong rapport with your patients. The other thing that I found that's so important in our field is debunking myths. There's one way to do it, which is de-Google someone and say, stop using the internet, stop searching for things. Or you could educate them about the CCRM approach and how we look at things with an evidence-based angle. And in that case, they almost don't go to the internet to go look things up and they don't go here only the bad side of what we do as fertility doctors. Instead, they have a positive outlook. I'm really proud of my accessibility to patients. As our clinic has grown, both in popularity and in just sheer volume, all of us in our practice have focused on making sure that every patient feels like they're our only patient. That is easily done by giving patients different modes of communication to get in touch with their physician. One of the most common complaints that we hear from a patient who's been treated at another clinic is that they just felt like another number. When everything goes great, that might work, but when everything is not working out, that lack of connection, that lack of communication can really damage the doctor-patient relationship. So by ensuring that every patient knows how to reach their doctor, their nurse, and their care team, I think we can provide outstanding care to patients during the best and worst of the times. One of my proudest moments as a fertility doctor happened in our first year of CCRM New York being open. A patient had come to me because she had heard that we were the last stop before giving up on getting pregnant. Her husband had already said, we're not gonna do this anymore. They had done countless cycles at other clinics. And she said, I just need to go to CCRM so I have closure. And I asked her, why did she think that this was gonna be impossible? And why was she setting herself up for failure before we even got to figure out who she is and what she needs? She explained to me that she and her husband had been counseled by many doctors to say that the science and technology are just not there. When we spoke to this patient and reviewed her records, and went through everything else that she had been through, I explained to her that there was a lot of data she already collected and that our approach could be one where we act on that data and we make tweaks and improvement to change her protocols. Well, lo and behold, changing her protocol led to three eggs being retrieved, two mature, two fertilizing, one embryo, and one normal embryo at the end. She says to me, you see, the cards are just stacked against me only one embryo. It's all I have. It's never going to work. We did an embryo transfer 
and every year she invites me to her kid's birthday party. And it reminds me that you need a little faith and you need a whole lot of science to get there. Before having children, I would have told you that my main passion was running. I love running in Central Park, being able to just lose myself and forget how many miles I've done or how many loops I've done, and kind of just thinking about nothing while enjoying everything about the run. Well, since having a child, that's now become an impossible hobby to follow because I find myself genuinely conflicted, wanting to run and wanting to spend time with my two and a half year old daughter. Thankfully, now that she's older, I've been able to put her in a running stroller and to regain some of that fun time, the running in Central Park and sharing with her what I enjoy about it so much. But definitely my number one thing outside of work is just being a dad, being there for my daughter, reading stories, playing sports, learning about ballet, and showing her how to basically stay out of trouble and having her teach me how to be a better doctor to my patients.